Scav was a remote planet in the O'Brien sector. The planet itself did not have much of a significant value for the most part, apart from the beaches of course, but the reason this planet is known is not for its beaches, nor its forests or materials, but what the Empire used it for. Today, we're going to look into the full lore of Scarif. So sit back, relax, and have a coconut from one of the trees. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. Welcome to Star Wars Timelines. Scarif was a beautiful but small world, measuring just over 9,000 kilometers in diameter. It had a remote and isolated galactic location in the southeast Outer Rim territories. Scarf was comprised of tropical volcanic islands and shallow oceans. The planet's mantle was filled with dense metals that became valuable in starship construction. Scarf's beaches were tranquil and, well, looked like paradise, and some led into jungle canopies filled with wildlife and had a lot of environmental stuff there that offered a lot of natural protection. Although Scarif's planetary mantle was filled with dense metal valuable in Starship construction, its remote location meant that supplying shipyards of, to the Core Worlds proved too costly. The Republican Separatists never made a move on the planet during the Clone Wars because of this, however in 22 BBY the Clone Wars ended and the Republic became the Galactic Empire under the leadership of Emperor Palpatine otherwise known as the Sith Lord Darth Sidious. The newly formed Galactic Empire saw Scarf as a potential place to house their most classified projects away from the inspection distance of the Imperial Senate. To this end, the Empire built a major security complex in the planet's northern hemisphere, garrisoned by a special deployment of the Tarkin Initiative, centered on a citadel tower. Large swaths of land were excavated in order to build starships, and a high altitude shield gauge station allowed entry pass of the planetary deflector shield. The shield gate itself consisted of a grey wheel shaped structure, with six hangars all facing out that housed many different starfighters. The purpose of the shield gate was to allow passage through Scarif's encompassing deflector shield. As Imperial starships and cargo ships approached, a gate officer would give clearance and create an opening in the centre of the station, allowing the vessels access to the planet's surface. Over the years, various officers began to treat Scarif as a place for unofficial retirement, where they could neglect their duty in the comfort of tropical paradise. No one ever thought Scarif would be discovered and saw it as one of the most easiest and most relaxing postings in the galaxy. Eventually, the base came to house the plans for the Death Star, codenamed Project Stardust. The Death Star itself had begun construction by the Confederacy of Independent Systems under the leadership of Count Dooku, Palpatine's Sith apprentice. The Geonosians, who designed the original plans, gave them to Dooku to give to Palpatine. Palpatine used the ploy that the Separatists were building this weapon in secret, frightening Republic officials enough to encourage them to start building their own Death Star. In reality, the Separatists weren't actually building the Death Star, the Geonosians just made the plans for it. After the Second Battle of Geonosis, the plan to be finalised, and the Republic forced the Geonosians to begin building the Death Star in secret. The Jedi had no idea that this was being built, and were not told about any of the plans, nor of the plan's existence at all. Palpatine used the fear of the Separatists finding out as a way to keep the project secret from anyone. After the Republic became the Empire, Palpatine issued Order 66, activating inhibitor chips inside the clone troopers to turn them on the Jedi. With the Jedi gone, Palpatine sped up the production on the Death Star. Governor Tarkin had been placed as the overseer of the project, and the project was codenamed Stardust, to prevent the Senate from discovering the Death Star. In 9 BBY, the project was moved from Geonosis to Scarif, to continue its construction under the supervision of director Orson Krennic. The designs of the station were transferred to the massive databanks of the Citadel. Despite the importance of the project, the officers of the garrison, commanded by General Sorterus, Romana, became complacent, mainly because of the confidence placed in Scarif's defences. In Zero BBY, the Rebel Alliance Intelligence Service received information from a Rebel Alliance operative 
who had infiltrated the extremist group known as the Partisans on the holy moon of Jeddah, saying that an Imperial cargo pilot, Bodhi Rook, had defected from the Galactic Empire, and according to the agent who passed the information on to Captain Cassian Andor, the pilot carried information from the renowned Imperial scientist Galen Erso, who was one of the lead scientists on the Death Star project. The Rebel Alliance then mounted a rescue attempt on Galen Erso's daughter, Jin Erso. Jin then travelled with Cassian to Jeddah to seek out the pilot who was being held by the Partisans leader, Saw Gerrera. However, at this point, the Empire had kind of got wind with what was going on with what this pilot defecting. The Death Star was now also ready to be tested. Krennic and Tarkin send the Death Star to Jeddah City, where the super weapon was fired directly at the Holy City. The city was destroyed in a matter of seconds, however Jin and Cassian had already met with Saw and narrowly escaped destruction. They learned that Galen had been taken to Edu, and that Galen had actually sabotaged the Death Star so that one torpedo into the main reactor would shut the whole system down. And explode the space station. Cassian and Jin travel to Edu to try and rescue Galen, however the attempt failed and Galen Erso was killed in the crossfire after the Rebel Alliance had attacked the facility. However they now knew that the plans for the Death Star were in fact being held on Scarif. Now just to go back on what I said earlier, even though Galen had already told them how they could destroy the space station, they still needed, needed the plans to locate where that main reactor actually was and how to do it. Fun fact. After returning from Edu, Jin and Cassian participated in an Alliance Council meeting where they told the gathered beings what they had learned about the Death Star and they needed to get the plans that were being held on Scarif. However, most were sceptical that such a weapon existed or that they were ready for open war with the Empire. Disheartened, Jin walked away from the meeting, only to find that Cassian had put together a group of fighters and was still willing to go with her and fight. Together, they called themselves Rogue One and undertook an unsanctioned mission to Scarif using the Imperial cargo shuttle that they had stolen earlier, heading directly for the planet. In the stolen shuttle, they were easily able to sneak past the shield gate and land on the planet. The impregnable base had just been compromised. While Jin and Cassian went to look for the plans, the rest of the rebels attacked the Imperial garrison, hoping to distract the Imperials so that Jin and Cassian could successfully complete their mission. After receiving word that the planet was under attack, the Rebel Alliance sent the Rebel fleet to aid Rogue One and the Battle of Scarif began. The Rebel fleet, led by Admiral Radus, engaged the Imperial fleet and began attacking the shield gate so that they would be able to receive the plans via hollow communication, which couldn't get through the shield gates. Shield. Eventually, the fleet was able to bring the shield gate down. Jin and Cassian were able to reach the plans and send them to the rebel fleet above, as well as defeating Director Krennic who was at the facility at the time. All seemed to be going well and all was planned and looked like everyone was gonna happily ever after. Until the Death Star arrived. Grandmoff Tarkin ordered the Death Star to destroy the facility in the hopes of containing the plans and stopping it falling into rebel hands. The Death Star fired, killing all Imperials and Rebels on the planet, including Jin Erso and Cassian Andor. The rebel fleet then attempted to escape, however they were blockaded by Darth Vader's Star Destroyer. Vader then proceeded to board the rebel ship, slaughtering the troops one by one. Despite this, one rebel blockade runner escaped with the plans, under the command of Princess Leia Organa, who is able to jump to hyperspace. As for the planet, the Death Star Super Laser had boiled the oceans of Scarif, burning the surface of the planet. The once tropical and resort-worthy planet was now hell. The Empire abandoned the planet as it no longer had any use to them. Not much point in having a super secret base on a burning planet if everyone knows about it. After that, Scarif was left alone once again in its isolated corner of the galaxy. And that is all we have for today's episode. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment what video you'd like to see next. Reminder, Clone Wars Part 3 tomorrow and then Clone Wars Part 4 on May the 4th. Uh, thank you for watching and may the force be with you.